Hello and welcome to this video on Workbench Mechanical in which we're going to examine a way to plot thermal conductivity as if it was a result. Although thermal conductivity is stated in thermal models, if your thermal conductivity was a function of temperature, then the thermal conductivity is going to be a consequence of the temperature distribution in an object. So, let's go in and look at engineering data. We'll go there and edit. Here we have a common material and we've invented a fictitious thermal conductivity and we've set it to range from 60.5 to 80 at 300 degrees. So at 21 degrees Celsius we're declaring 60.5. We're declaring that at 300 it might be 80. This is just for the purpose of illustration. This is not a real material. Now let's go look at the model. We've created a simple bar. Go to a system of units with meters. And we're seeing 21 at one end. And we're seeing 300 at the other. So we're going to put into this object the range of temperatures that we saw for the material properties. That's all we need to do to get a range of temperatures in here. However, we've done one more thing. We've inserted an APDL commands object. And in there, we've set the output to the results file to include all results. Because in Workbench, the thermal gradient is not automatically included in the results file. So this is done really just to force the thermal gradient to be stored for all substeps. The model had a quick solution. Here's the temperature profile going in Celsius from 21 at one end to 300 at the other. We made the mesh fine in order to get reasonable resolution from the left to the right hand ends. We can get a heat flux result. It's pretty much a constant heat flux in here. You notice there's almost no difference between the top and bottom of this legend, so it's really one result. We can look at a, a thermal flux in X. It's the same thing. Here it's been put in as a user-defined result. We've put in TFX, the thermal flux, in the X direction. Here we've typed in an expression that will return a thermal gradient in X because the temperature changes from one end to the other and we have a temperature dependent conductivity then the gradient is not constant even though the thermal flux is constant. Now the conductivity is simply the minus sign of the flux divided by the gradient. Here they are for the X direction and we'll see that the thermal conductivity has changed. It's not quite going up to 80 at the end because it's really just one value per element. It doesn't go right to the absolute edge. But we've virtually gone from our beginning thermal conductivity up to 80. So there it is. That's all there is to it. There's the result. It's an expression and it returns the conductivity, in this case in the X direction. If you want to, you could simply place minus TFX over TGX as user-defined result and go straight to the answer. And that's it. 